It's daily life. <laughs> but you already know that because you're already awake. Are you one of those people that just love to wake up in the morning and you hear the birds singing, the sun shining, you know, the sky is opened up, it's becoming gray to blue, and everything was made just for you? I don't like you. <laughs> if that's your day, praise the Lord. <laughs> I think most of us are kind of like that, you know. We're not real thrilled with the day yet. But, like my wife says, give her a cup of coffee. And yes, she's still trying to quit smoking, so give her her cigarette. And let her do her morning constitutional. <laughs> and the day becomes better already. <laughs> of course, then she'll go out and sit here where I'm sitting, actually, and read her Bible and... Yeah, she'll read her devotional and she'll take time to pray. All before the sun rises. But she is not what you would call a morning person. Well, wait a minute. Maybe she is a morning person because she is grumpy in the morning. And she's real about it. <laughs> so, if you're putting on airs or you're trying to make yourself happy in the morning, don't. For God's sakes. And that's why. For God's sake. Because, you see, God loves you. And it's not based upon how you're feeling. But it's based upon how He feels about you. Uh-oh. Do you love me, Lord? <laughs> of course He does. The reason why He does isn't based upon your actions either. Although, your participation in what Jesus did does involve you, but for the most part, God already loves you because he said so. John 3.16 is pretty simple. For God so loved the world, that, that, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You don't have to perish. I mean, really. Let's get real. Either, you know, God's really real, or he's really not, you know, and... I think life is going to let you know whether God is real. Because if you're one of those happy campers that no matter what, you're always going, it's either God or the devil, that you don't have to deal with your own flesh, and you don't have to face trials and challenges, then maybe they do have a point about Christians. Maybe they're not realistic. But if God is real, and you can be so heavenly minded that you're all earthly good, then I say, get on with the show. <laughs> Straighten up your act. You know what you're doing wrong. Deal with it. Let's get real. Isn't it time? In daily life, as we look at it with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 in mind, we trust the Lord always because if we trusted in men, they'll fail us. If we trust in ourselves, we'll fail us. If we trust in our wives, she'll fail us. If we trust in our kids, they'll fail us. If we trust in our religion, it fails us. If we trust in the news, it fails us. So really, if you trust in anything else except for the Lord, it'll fail you. Because they're not God. Oh! Well, that makes sense. Gee. You mean I'm supposed to trust in the Lord? <laughs> well, like, <clears throat> where else do you think you're going to trust? <laughs> I mean, they say that if you trust in riches, or you trust in glory, or you trust in your arms, or you trust in your roots, or you trust in your soldiers, or you trust in your might, or you trust in anything else other than the Lord, then I think you're getting a wrong idea and wrong impression about what God is. Because really, God is all about being who He is. And one day, he's going to let everyone know, beyond any shadow of a doubt, when he wipes out, like, one-third of some army that's going to come down from the north, then everyone knows it is the Lord that did it. Ooh. When that day happens, I think we can say, you pissed me off. <laughs> but until then, peace.
people play with this idea about is God real or not? Uh, for me, hmm, I think he's real. Okay, let me change that. I know he's real. I have had him on holding me just like that. He's squeezing me because he loves me. Did you ever heard that song? Because he loves you, he's going to squeeze you? <sighs> Today, a God of truth without iniquity, just and right, is he. Him that judges righteously, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Uh-oh. Both? Good and bad? Both, Lord? Really? Uh, can we skip over that part? Can we go on to something else today? Can we act like we didn't read it? Ooh. Can we act like... I didn't see that. I didn't say that. I didn't hear that. Well, if it's a monkey on your back, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Holy Spirit's working on you. <laughs> Trust in the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Try Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Yeah, 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 yeah. Work it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You'll get there. You're fine. Don't worry. Every one of us shall give an account to himself to God. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd. Huh? The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Oh, he's getting the punishment. We're getting the grace. He's getting the pain. We're getting the joy. Well, that ain't fair. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Mercy rejoices against judgment. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, oh, I see, I think. A just God and a savior, there is none beside me just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus, justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So, when we know that Jesus did it all, why are we acting like we have some sort of ability in ourselves to fix ourselves, clean up our act, or to do something about our righteousness, about our salvation? Because we are going to give an account, but Jesus justified us already. So what you're doing now is an expression of how much you are thankful and grateful for that which Jesus has done. But more than that, Jesus said that I'm not doing this just because I love you, although that's a good reason. And I'm not doing this just because the Father loves you, although that is a good reason. I'm doing it because I want you to learn that it's not about doing your own thing and going your own way, but it's about walking with me today and living with my Father today and doing those things that please Him, not because He told you to, but because you want to. Because we've been watching you in heaven, you know, and, you know, the things that you're choosing to do, you know, they don't turn out so good. As a matter of fact, it really hurt all the people around you. Kind of like, you know, not really blessing them, but if you let me, let me do my work in you and let me flow through you by my spirit, you know, I can help all those people all around you. 
I could touch all those people all around you. I could even allow you to be with me as I show them how to come to the Father and inherit eternal life and salvation forever. Would you not let me be Lord today? I think that might be what God is saying. Don't you? Could be. Hmm. Well, that made it easy. Maybe this Christianity isn't so hard after all. Death is swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God which gives us the victory through Lord Jesus Christ. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. And, 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 deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Are you afraid of dying? Maybe that's why you don't want to go be a missionary. Hmm. Are you afraid of death? Hmm. But you've got eternal life. Are you afraid of really, like, closing your eyes and waking up in heaven? Maybe it's because you really don't know Jesus as much as you think you do. Doesn't it say something like... Deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Did you know that if you fear death, you're in bondage? Really, you're like wrapped up in chains of your own imagination because you can't free yourself to be able to risk everything for the sake of Jesus. I mean, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, didn't they stand in the fire and Jesus was there? Daniel with the lions, wasn't he there and an angel shut the mouths? My own life, didn't the doctors come and tell me, you're not going to live past 30 and if you live that long, that will be a miracle. I don't know about you, but if you haven't seen me lately, I don't think I'm 30 anymore. <laughs> really? Man, I keep telling people I'm only 30. Really? So, if you're wrapped up in the fear of death, and you're not accomplishing all that God wants you to, it's because the bondage of the fear of death hasn't allowed you to do those things that God wants you to do. But you need to wrap yourself around this truth because it is a scripture. Matter of fact, I think it's in Hebrews 2.14. Either that or 1 Corinthians 15.57 because it's written right here <laughs> in the book. But it says, Who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage? What need you fear? Perfect love casts out all fear. If we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death hath no more dominion over him, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lives, he lives unto God. Likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It's not that we can conquer that. You can't conquer your own fears. You can only get so close and be in right relationship with Jesus that you no longer fear because you are with him as he comforts you in it. The day that you face fear, you'll know whether you... Face fear of death, I mean. You'll know whether you have fear or whether you just kind of like go... <clears throat> That's what I was afraid of? I close my eyes and wake up in heaven and there's Jesus? I don't think I need to fear that part. And that is the bondage. Because if you can get to that point, you're free from worrying about, as some people do, being in a terrorist situation or your neighbor has a gun. You know, i faced guns before where people pointed them in my face, you know, and I said, hey, you know what? <laughs> you can pull the trigger, but if God don't want it, if God doesn't want me dead, it ain't gonna go off. You can share and care whether you live or whether you die 
whether you breathe or whether you take your last breath, without fear of dying, because death has lost its sting, and death is swallowed up in victory in what Jesus has done. So today you can swallow up your day and fearing anything that comes your way, because if you lose the fear of death, you're sure not worried about anything else that's coming your way, are you? <laughs> As a matter of fact, you might even begin to start to enjoy life the way it was meant to be.